So now we're going to get to the main part, which is part two, and that's actually treating anaphylaxis. Treating anaphylaxis is a core uh, specialist emergency medicine skill. This is just like we expect surgeons to be good at operations uh, and not cut the wrong uh, thing while, while they're doing the operation. We expect emergency specialists to be uh, experts at resuscitating someone with anaphylaxis. Um, I'm going to show you a video uh, of uh, James Sindos when he was 16. And I just want to show you how good he is at playing the piano. Here we go. James died from anaphylaxis. And the reason why I'm showing you that video, he, he was 16 when he played that, he died when he was 17. Um, and the reason I'm showing you that video is because anaphylaxis uh, happens in young, healthy, otherwise healthy people. Yes, he might have uh, some past history of asthma, but he's otherwise well. He's got another 80 years to live. Um, and what we're talking about today is high, high yield in terms of uh, interventions to save somebody's life and let them live happily and healthily. So um, that was James, incredible piano player. If you get through some, someone through anaphylaxis, he'd be happily playing the piano again. But unfortunately, he, he died. And I'll show you what happened to James, actually. Um, this is James's family. Um, Harry and Vanetta, his parents, I spend a lot of time now with, with these guys. He's got three older sisters. They're all beautiful and they miss James dearly. Uh, that's on their trip to Greece. They're just a, 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 you know, another family in Melbourne um, uh, living with, with a tragedy. So th this is what happened to James. So he, he was 17 years old. He, he was allergic to cashews. He just finished the school play, Mamma Mia, he's in year 12, he's about to finish school. He ordered uh, a sandwich from a vegan restaurant that had cheese sauce. Now cheese sauce in a vegan restaurant means cashews. But as a, as a teenager, you don't know that. It's uh, it said cheese sauce. In the fine print, it said something about cashews, but he ordered it, he, he ate some, and he developed acute allergy. At the beginning, it was mild. He had some skin symptoms, some tummy, some abdominal pain, felt a bit itchy in the, in the throat. Um, they called the paramedics. The paramedics gave him two doses of IM adrenaline, but he didn't actually really meet the criteria for anaphylaxis in that sort of more severe you know, acute allergy spectrum. Um, but as he was being triaged at a metropolitan Melbourne emergency department, he became wheezy. And uh, the paramedics alerted the, the triage staff and the, and the bedside nurse to the fact that there were some new symptoms, but he got put in a single room. And uh, by the time he gets to the single room it, uh, and he's being triaged, he, he's got 19 minutes left to live. The first thing that they do is, uh, because James is trying to use his puffer, is to get him a spacer and give him Ventolin. Um, so it takes some time to find the spacer, but they put an IV cannula in, uh, that's great, but he doesn't get any uh, uh, IM adrenaline really until four minutes before he arrests. The, there's some time that goes past. During that time, he starts to get more and more short of breath, and he actually starts asking for help. He, he says, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I'm going to die, and says that multiple times. And uh, staff, medical staff around him say, James, your, your breathing looks fine to me. Four minutes before he stops breathing, he gets IM adrenaline. Now, this is my qu question to you. How long does it take? Uh, I want you to think in your, in your brain, how long does it take IM adrenaline to get to peak effect? Um, just have a think of a number. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, the, the answer is five to eight minutes in the literature. So you're not going to get peak effect until five minutes, and James has only got four minutes left. Um, so that's going to be important when we talk about how we respond to people in extremis, understanding the time frames. If he gives subcutaneous adrenaline, which we stopped doing a long time ago, it takes up to 20 minutes to get maximum effect. So if you accidentally give it subcut and it's not intramuscular, then it, you actually might not be getting any adrenaline for some time. So you've got to keep in mind that, oh, maybe, ma ma you know, if you're not getting an effect, was it subcut? Is it just because, um, you know, that there's some other risk factors like high, high dose allergen or there's some 
concurrent viral illness or pre-existing asthma, something's going to uh, make them have a severe reaction. But if you're not getting a reaction, you need to keep, it's, if you're not getting improvement, you need to keep going. All right, so James then stops breathing uh, in his cubicle. Uh, he gets moved to resus. He sort of crashes, you know, the hypoxic agitation and there's a loud bang and you know, they start CPR in the cubicle, they move him to recess, they start bag valve masking him, they say that, that feels funny, so they put a laryngeal mask in, that, that feels uh, a bit better, um, but we'll come to why that's probably uh, not right. Um, the LMA was thought to be effective, but it's probably not right. He doesn't get real adrenaline uh, until 13 minutes after he's arrested, and he doesn't get intubated until 17 minutes after he arrests. After he gets intubated, he's difficult to ventilate, high pressures. His heartbeat starts to come back. It looks a bit funny, a bit wide. Somebody decides that needs a shock. They give one shock. They're still having tight ventilation, but then they decide to give some amiodarone for unclear reasons. And I highlight this because this is somebody trying to extrapolate a VF algorithm to a completely inappropriate situation. He gets a dose of amiodarone and immediately becomes asystolic on the end of the push. There was no indication for amiodarone. In fact, it's contraindicated. And uh, then he gets another dose. And uh, he eventually goes on to ECMO, um, but, he's, uh, but he, he, um, he becomes brain dead and dies uh, uh, 24 hours later after withdrawal of treatment. So this happened in a metropolitan emergency department in Melbourne. M Melbourne's a city of like four or five million people, four million people. All right, so we're just gonna quickly go through uh, the, the, the nuts and bolts of consensus anaphylaxis management. I mean, it's pretty similar all over the world, uh, except we're, we're not calling it epinephrine, we're calling it adre adrenaline. And uh, what we do here is we give half a milligram, so we're just gonna talk adult doses, or 10 marks per kilo. We give it every five minutes because maximum effect at five minutes, if you've still got symptoms, we need some more. So that makes sense. That's why it's every five minutes, that's good. Um, if we need more than two doses, we, we start an, uh, an IV adrenaline infusion. We supplement things. If they've got wheeze, we supplement it with bronchodilators. If they've got low blood pressure, we supplement it with the adrenaline infusion. And sometimes we might need, oh, we might need noradrenaline, vasopressin. We're happy to escalate to whatever we need to keep our blood pressure up. We give some fluid boluses. Um, and we might do some nebulized adrenaline uh, for some airway symptoms for what that's worth. But the parenteral adrenaline, the IM adrenaline will be better. All right, so that, that's, that's what we do. Um, now, we're gonna come to the IV adrenaline bolus in a, in a second. And I've got the adrenaline tachometer up in that corner there. Now, that the, the adrenaline tachometer means that sometimes we just need one dose. Or we, some, some patients, acute allergy, they don't need anything. And they just get observed, go to short stay, go home with the, the follow-up. Um, sometimes I need one dose, sometimes two doses. More than two doses, we're getting down to the 10%. And to, to need IV adrenaline, we're getting down to a really small percent. So, you know, it depends which cohort you read in the literature. Um, arrests are rare, but important. So, this is the nuts and bolts of it. For the wheeze and asthma component of anaphylaxis, we use parenteral adrenaline, IV or IM, plus the bronchodilators, plus uh, in Australia, in Victoria, we would give NIV for anyone with asthma now. We're pretty comfortable with that. Um, and we might intubate them. For the airway component of anaphylaxis, it's the same, parenteral adrenaline, plus maybe some nebulized adrenaline for what that's worth, and an e early ETT if it's progressing. And for blood pressure, it, we give the fluids on top of the parenteral adrenaline, but we always start with adrenaline. Now, IM adrenaline is completely safe. There's 20% of people who might get some minor side effects, tachycardia, some tremor, but it, to, ha to cause any harm from IM adrenaline is exceedingly rare. Feel comfortable giving it, feel comfortable giving multiple doses. Um, we swung away from IV adrenaline years ago because uh, people were giving too much. We know IM adrenaline is extraordinarily safe, but as critical care specialists, you need to know how to do more than IM adrenaline. Yes. This is, if you want to give IV adrenaline because we need help now, not in five minutes time when the IM adrenaline is kicking in, this, 
the dose is a one microgram per kilogram. This is APLS, which is a, a peak paediatric resuscitation course that we, uh, that we often do in Australia. It's uh, elsewhere in the world. Um, but I'm just drawing your attention to the middle row, which is adrenaline IV. And that, um, it, it's got titrate one microgram per kilo with a star on it. And I've put the star up the top. And the star says one microgram per kilogram given over one minute. The range 30 seconds push. Uh, to 10 minutes. And when something says 30 seconds in, in, a, in a book, that means just, <laughs> you know, push it in. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a bolus. So if you need help right now, then you need to have the adrenaline IV ampule drawn up in your hands. And uh, uh, I'm going to put a video up of, of how to draw up IV ad adrenaline because it's a, it's, a, it's a core technical skill for doctors to be able to go get an ampule of adrenaline and make it into, into one milligram in 10 mils or, uh, or another dilution of 10 for, for the smaller people. Um, but you need to know how to do it. Take that home with you, one microgram per kilogram as an IV bolus if you're in trouble. Remember the guidelines are always written in stepwise severity. So it starts, this is what you do with mild cases, moderate, severe, but sometimes you're, you're faced with a patient who's got the severe case. They, they haven't gone through each stage. They just present on your doorstep blue uh, in the parent's arms or um, by ambulance where, yeah, as with, with a GCS of three. And you need to start at the bottom. So that means going for the IV adrenaline first and then supplementing with an infusion. So speaking of adrenaline infusions, um, how long does it take to get an adrenaline infusion drawn up in your department? What do you reckon? Uh, I've done this talk a few times now and uh, 10 minutes is the consensus. So, you know, t 10 minutes and then you've got to start the pump and it's got to get rid of the dead space and you start it at a low dose and then you need to titrate up. It's a slow process. That's great if they're awake and talking. It's completely inappropriate to wait that time if a patient's an extremist and unconscious. Remember that asthma can decompensate very rapidly. It's inversely, you know, yeah, the airway resistance is uh, proportionate to, uh, inversely proportionate to the radius to the power of four. So small changes in the bronchioles will cause catastrophic uh, changes in resistance and uh, there'll be sudden deterioration. So just like all, uh, you know, especially young people in paediatrics, they compensate, compensate in a linear fashion and eventually just suddenly uh, stop breathing. So you need to intervene before that happens. Um, so if they see severe hypoxia or somebody's begging for help, those are signs of uh, impending arrest and you, you need to um, get some push dose IV adrenaline, NIV if you can, and get ready for the next stage. So let's just, we're getting close to the end of this, uh, this section, but I just want to say what should have happened to James as, as an emergency specialist myself. Hi James, it looks like you've got some asthma symptoms with your anaphylaxis. Don't worry, we're going to look after you. We're going to give you some IM adrenaline and uh, we're going to give you some Ventolin. We'll give you 12 puffs and we'll give you eight puffs of uh, uh, Ipratropium as well. Um, and we're going to move you to an area where we can keep a closer eye on you. And then five minutes later, because it takes five minutes to deliver uh, 12 puffs of Salbutamol and the Ipratropium. And this is what I did for an anaphylaxis uh, patient at my shop, uh, you know, a couple of months ago. So. It, 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 and it worked really well. Five minutes later, they're still wheezy. And our end point is saying, well, if they're, if they're deteriorating, we need to keep escalating. But if things have stabilised, we can just think about our next, our next move and do things slowly. And if they're getting better, we can back off. So we always have to keep thinking about our end point. Uh, if improving, we can say, okay, all right, well, we'll, we'll just see uh, if that IM adrenaline is going to keep working. But if they're deteriorating, you need to keep escalating. So five minutes later, he's still wheezy. James, he's still wheezy. In fact, uh, that really doesn't look like it's done anything. Here's another dose of IM adrenaline, and here's another dose of inhaled bronchodilators. James gets worse. He, turns out he's got a cold. He's got asthma. This, he had a decent dose of cashews. This is a catastrophe. James, it looks like your asthma is getting worse. Um, Let's, let's get some IV adrenaline. Nurses, can you get me a uh, 1 in 10,000 uh, uh, adrenaline ampule and I'll draw that up. And James, I'm going to give 100 micrograms. Um, 
can you get, get the intubation equipment ready? Um, we'll, we'll get the adrenaline infusion coming. Um, James, you're gonna be okay though. We've got this under control. We could, we could try some NIV if we had time to do that, but we would be totally prepared for him to decompensate and stop breathing um, about to intubate him. And, and, and that's what should have happened to James. He might have been fine after the first dose of adrenaline if you had have got it early enough.